I've met a few students who are going forward with the A plus certification exam. Now, the core one exam is more into hardware installation and configuration. And for those students whereby they do not have a PC that they can work with, eh, what I usually advise is that for laboratory purposes, they can actually make use of the PC building simulator game instead. And this particular series will then be looking at that particular game. So I do not intend to show you like how to play the game and whatnot, but I will be walking you through on how to get the game as well as how useful is it in preparation for your a plus exam first off shout out to steve from the gordon tape so thank you so much because <laughs> he's the one who actually introduced uh, the game to me from epic games and that's how i learned from it so once again thank you all right so how do we get this particular game there are three options first option is that you can actually get it coming from the pcbuildingsim.com website you would notice coming from the top that there are two variants of PCBS. So we do have PC Building Simulator 1, which is the first edition, obviously. And then there's now the PC Building Simulator 2. Now, please be aware that PC Building Simulator 2 is only available directly coming from Epic Games or from this particular website that is. Second option would be through Steam. So if you've been a player, you've got a Steam account, then you can actually download the game or purchase it directly coming from Steam. And then thirdly, please be aware the PC Building Simulator is likewise available under Microsoft Store. Simply search for PC Building Simulator and here is that particular app. So once again, your three options would either be one directly coming from Epic Games or PCBuildingSim.com. Two would be via Steam and then third would be through Microsoft Store okay let's play <laughs> so this one is pc building simulator one the cool thing about this is that there's actually um, a guide on how to build a pc which is not present in pc building simulator 2 or maybe i'm just not familiar with it but anyway so let us go with how to build a pc using pc building simulator one Oh, there you go. So it says how to build a PC mode. In this tutorial, you will learn about the main components of a PC and how they go together, which is really cool, particularly if you are a student, you wanted to learn how to build your PC uh, starting from scratch right so here we do have the case whereby we needed to first open the panel right so it says we need to remove the side panels of the case so we can install the components inside right so click on continue right so you can actually use your uh, right mouse button so that you can rotate the object right so there you go and then just to remove uh, so as to remove the case part just click and hold there you go Ta -da! Once again, rotate. So press and hold the right mouse button and then click and hold. That's it. Right. Let us now install the PSU. Now the PSU corresponds to the power supply unit, which then provides the power to all of the components as it says in the instruction. It leaves behind a PSU mount, which needs to be removed before the PSU can be installed. So let's click on continue. Here is the mount that it was referring to. So we will first remove the um, screws. There you go. So this screw, so there are four screws, one on each corner. Right? So let us just click and hold, click and hold, click and hold. Right? <laughs> Obviously, in real life, uh, you will need to know your different types of screwdrivers, right? So whether would it be the cross uh, or Phillips or a flat screw, right? So need to know those things. All right, so let us go to the inventory. Here is our power supply unit. So let us rotate. You can actually click, just left click and then hold as you rotate the object. At the back, so we do have here our main power. So that's, oh, there you go. 
that's the main power, not modular port. <laughs> there you go. So that's the mains power. Um, obviously, in the exam, you needed to be able to know how to calculate the needed wattage or the power that is required for a PC. So you'll take the sum of the wattages that is needed for each component and that would be the minimum amount of power that your PSU needs uh, to provide. Next one, if we turn this one out, so we now have our modular port. So all of these ones are your modular ports. The 24 port is for the motherboard and then all the rest will then be with the various items or components in our motherboard. So you can actually click on modular port and it says, oh, there you go, where it is it now? <laughs> right, there you go. So it says modular port. These ports allow you to attach cables that carry power to the components. Uh, modular means that you only have to attach the cables for the components that you have. So modular. Next one, uh, we now have our fan. So this is the fan for that particular uh, PS unit. So the fan, uh, PSUs generate a lot of heat and then this fan expels hot air. So going away. All right, so let us now install. So to install, we just be click and drag and then we'll now once again install the case part. Right, so quite a few screws that we needed to put in. So I'm just clicking and holding on my mouse. Left button, by the way. <laughs> Ta-da! Alright, so let us now install the motherboard. So at the heart of the PC is the motherboard and all of the major components connect to it. Let us continue, go to the inventory, and here is our motherboard. Obviously, the motherboards do differ uh, depending on the model, depending on the brand, uh, but how it looks uh, is almost similar. The same thing when you actually see like a slot for the CPU socket, you would know, oh, okay, cool, so that's for the CPU. The same thing, the slots for the RAM, similar, similar. Um, so for the CompTIA A plus exam, you needed to be able to identify which ones are your I.O. ports, CPU socket for the RAM, uh, which ones are for the PCIe, uh, for your SATA ports and all that. Okay, so let us look at each one. Here are our I.O. ports, so that's the back panel. You just basically have to align it with the back panel of your case. Um, when purchasing, we first look at our motherboard. So the size um, and dimensions of your motherboard should be the one that will dictate what case you are to purchase. So whether will it be an ATX, extended ATX, mini ITX, mini ATX, for example. So yeah, so hopefully that makes sense on why you first choose your motherboard. And then from there, you choose your case. Uh, same thing, once again, for the power supply unit as well. So Because obviously, they all need to fit in your case. <laughs> all right, so your I.O. ports are the ports where you plug in all of your peripherals, like your keyboard and the mouse. So that's where we can find, for example, the USB port for your local area network, HDMI for the sound and whatnot. Alright, so this is where we will install the CPU. So that is under the CPU socket. Here are our RAM slots. Uh, it just so happened for this particular case, we do a 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 of them. Uh, here would be the 24 pin uh, for the power right so motherboards need enough power to run the components attached to them so they usually have more than one connector to the PSU right so please remember that <laughs> next uh, by the way with the RAM uh, same same so when I say same same you start with the motherboard you understand what RAM is compatible with it so depending on the motherboard would be what kind of ram you can purchase whether will it be ddr3 or ddr4 because the slots later on we will show you as well as the speed or the frequency of the ram the size of it uh, needs to be compatible with the motherboard all right here we do have our sata ports so that would be for your hard disk drive we do have the front panel headers where we connect the front panel of the case like with the lights and all. Uh, the standoffs, so we will cover that once we install our motherboard. 
PCI slots, for example, for the graphics unit. And then what else? Oh, the C, right? Oh, the chipset, right? So the chipsets are processors that support the CPU and manage how it works. Every CPU model has its own bespoke chipset that is designed to get the most from it. All right, let us now install the motherboard. I'll rotate the case. Here is where we will put in the motherboard. So basically, we'll need to align it with the back panel of the case. That's that. Uh, but before you in put in the motherboard, we will first install our standoffs. Right, so those small looking thing, like a screw, they're not metal. Uh, they're intended to separate your motherboard from the metal part of the case. Right, so let us click and hold. All right, so as to install the standoffs. And then we'll now put in our motherboard. All right, so there you go. So we'll now screw them in. There you go. Right, so to lock it in place. And once again, notice that the uh, I.O. ports is properly aligned with the back of the case. Sweet. So it is now asking us to connect the power. So this one is the 24 pin power. It will be connected to the power supply unit. Once again, just click and hold. Um, here would be for the front panel, I think. Yeah, there you go. So it says connects to the case's front panel. That would be on off button, USB plus audio jack, etc. Right. So there would be a cable going to the top. Right. So hopefully you see my cursor. And then here would be the 8-pin ATX CPU power. So the one that powers up your CPU. <laughs> so cable going to the power supply unit. So it says there. All right. Cool. So the cool thing about this simulator is that you don't really need like the cable. You, know? <laughs> you just click and hold. So quite easy. Anyway, so the CPU. So the CPU is the next one that we will install. It is the PC's brain. It performs calculations based on information from some components and passes the results to others. So as before we've talked about the compatibility with the motherboard so same same with the cpu so you need to ensure uh, whether does the motherboard support intel cpu or maybe perhaps it would be an amd cpu the reason being is that there are cpus that do not have a pin uh, that there are cpus that has pins protruding out of it so let us look at our inventory and what cpu we got all right so here are the pins so this one is quite flat all right so that is an lga uh, more likely that would be intel the opposite of it is a pga which would then have pins uh, protruding which is common for amd all right so let us again rotate uh, so inside it would be your processor and then the one that you're seeing in here would be the heat plate. Commonly when we install it, uh, we try not to touch the pins, right? And then how to orient it to the motherboard, you will be looking at that particular triangle thingy at the corner. Hopefully you see that one. <laughs> uh, you basically just have to match it on the CPU socket on the motherboard. Alright, let us install. Cool, so let us first remove the CPU shield because that's what we currently have in here. Hopefully you see the movement. <laughs> so there is the CPU shield. Uh, basically, you just have to remove that particular pin. So lift the pin so that it would lift the shield and then we can now put in the CPU. Sweet, we'll now close the shield. And the next one is that your CPUs produce heat. For that matter, we needed to cool it down, right? So one way uh, to improve the conductivity between our CPU as well as our cool um, cooling system, maybe fan and whatnot, uh, would be to put thermal paste. Now, with PC Building Simulator 1, it's just a matter of a dot <laughs> that you can put in uh, for a thermal paste. But with PC Building Simulator 2, you can actually put in like a pattern for thermal paste as well. But anyway, so let us continue. Let us click and that will put in your thermal paste. As simple as that, right? 
All right, so it now says we can now install the CPU cooler. There are two main cooling types. We do have air, like the fans, and then we now have water. So many fancy uh, cooling systems nowadays, particularly for gaming, computers uh, would have like water-based types of cooling. All right, so continue. Let us go back to our inventory, and here is our fan, <laughs> so CPU cooler. Right, so let us rotate right so this is our fan right so that's the fan there is the slot for the power because obviously the fan needs to move <laughs> this one would be your heat sink fins and here is the plate right so that is where uh, the cpu the thermal paste and this one will be connected to each other <laughs> and those are your brackets right yeah, cool all right let us install so we'll just put in the air cooler right and then we'll now connect the power to there that's it <laughs> let us proceed with the graphics card <clears throat> So it says the next important component is the graphics processing unit or the GPU. GPUs are often mini computers in themselves with their own processors and memory to calculate the complex visuals of today's games. So some GPUs are fancy in the sense that they're big, they're very expensive. Um, that's really what makes a computer expensive as well. So with the GPU. Uh, let us see what this one has. So we've got our fan and the heatsink. We've got the back plate. Obviously, you will be aligning this one to the back of the case. It says dual GPU. Okay, cool. So that is interesting. Uh, it says many GPUs use this connector to allow for multiple cards to be linked together for more power. So some systems even allow for up to four cards. Quite cool, right? Uh, graphics processor. So there you go. And then this type of processor is connecting via PCI. Right? So this, right? So that's the one that you'll be looking at as a slot in your motherboard. So once again, you also needed to check, right? So the compatibility of your GPU to your motherboard as well. And then based on what is available, the back panel would be the connector that you can use <clears throat> to connect your monitor into your GPU. So whether will it be HDMI, DVI, VGA, and whatnot. All right, let us install. So for this particular case, uh, we do have a PCI cover, right? So how would you know? So that's your PCI slot. And if you will be putting in your graphics, uh, graphics card that is, then we'll first need to remove this particular cover. So, right, so there's a screw that we'll need to remove and then remove that particular metal part. And then we'll uh, push in our graphics card. And once again, it needs to align with the back of your case so that's that anyway uh, let us now screw this one in now in some fancier gpus uh, they may also require power as well all right but this particular instance we don't so just screw this one in that's it memory so next is the memory or the ram that would be random access memory RAM is very fast memory that the CPU uses to hold the programs that are running on the PC. RAM comes in sticks and many of the same type can be combined to give the PC more memory to use. So things to know about the RAM would be the types in terms of the size. So we do have DIMM and SODIMM. DIMM, the IMM, are typically used in desktops whereas SODIMM is typically used in laptops. To what I know, with PC Building Simulator, you can only simulate desktops. I am yet to see if there are laptops in PC Building Simulator 2. Cool. Anyway, so let us click on continue. And once again, with the RAM, you need to ensure that it is compatible with your motherboard. Uh, hopefully, you see that small notch in there. So that is one that varies between DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. The speed or the frequency also varies between DDR2, 3, and 4, and obviously the size, all right? So it's size in terms of how many gig, right? so gigabytes. Right? So memory chips are inside this particular RAM. 
Uh, in this example, we don't see the IC or the integrated circuits, but the old ones, you can actually see the IC. So it says, the chips on a stick of RAM are very fast types of memory designed to hold programs so the computer can access them as quickly as possible. Right, so we now have this, so that would be your connectors, and then the side on the side would be the locks, right? So it is important to know how you can actually remove and or install the components on a PC, uh, particularly for your A plus certification if that is what you are gearing towards to. All right, so let us look at the installation. This would be your slots for the RAM. It just so happened, and then in this example, we do have four of them. And then we will be installing two sticks. Right? So let us open first the clip. So you first uh, open the clips to the side. So that's that. And then once it has been opened, we can now position the RAM stick, push it until such that the clip will. Uh, keep the memory in place. It will now lock the memory in place. So that's what we wanted when we are installing RAM. Now some RAM, RAM sticks are also fancy to the extent that there is now like lights as well, uh, but they're directly powered by the motherboard. Sweet. All right, so let us now click and hold, click and hold, and that's that. Install the hard drive. The last major component is the hard disk drive or HDD. The hard drive stores all of the data for the operating system, the programs and the users, photo, music, and videos. The PC building simulator also has SSD to what I know. They also now have NVRAM 2 or NVMe, I mean. Cool. So it just happened that here <laughs> with the start we are playing around with the hard disk drive and if you know with the hard disk drives it has moving plates right so the unit of measure for the speed is revolutions per minute and then here is where we now have our sata plus the power right? so sata and power and this ones would then just be the jumper so back in the days so we used to put in jumpers in there so as to identify which one would be the master disk and which one would be the slave disk. Sweet! All right, so let us now click on install. Uh, this particular case has a caddy or a drive bay so click to open it huh? and then put in the hard disk drive. Uh, push in the drive bay. There you go. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, ideally, we should also be putting them in place through screws but not needed for this case but anyway uh, we'll now need to connect the SATA uh, to the motherboard SATA obviously by the way it is connected to that SATA there you go see there you go uh, next one would be the power right so we'll connect the power to there awesome Finally, I think this is the final one. Uh, it says additional cooling. All the components of the PC give out heat. Case fans will keep the temperature down by moving the hot air out of the case. So let us click on continue, go to inventory. And here is the fan. <laughs> yeah, very quite simple. Um, for laboratory, the common one where students get confused would be the orientation. So just look at, um, so there would usually be like a sticker, a marking, which one is to the external of the case, which one should be going inside, right? In that way, uh, you would not get it wrong in regard to how the air will be moving. <laughs> Alright, so we do have here the motor. Uh, and then the fins, uh, simple. Um, this is active, so that means it needs to be powered. So later on, we will need to attach power to it as well. Okay, cool. So let us then attach the case in here. We will put it into place by uh, screwing it on. What's that correct term? <laughs> Putting in screws. Alright. And then there you go, right? So we will need to connect the power and then go to the motherboard. That's it. All right, so it says close the case. Now we just need to replace all the covers to protect all those delicate components, right? So once again, it's just a matter of a click and then another click and then turn on the PC. So the power button would be 
up above there you go oh there you go we cannot turn it on yet because <laughs> we need to plug in the cables first as well right so for plugging in uh, it's just again click uh, you don't need to click and drag and then so click once again click click right click click so this one by the way is hdmi that's why it's going to the graphics card and then another one and then click sweet very simple to operate so hopefully um yeah this particular demonstration uh, gives you an idea how it will be helpful for learning how to build the pc and that's it well i hope you learned something and if you have any other topics in mind that you would like me to cover please leave them in the comment section down below and once again please don't forget to click the like share and subscribe see you in the next video